Let's talk about the orbit in detail this time. Orbit is a term meaning the gravitationally curved trajectory of an object such as one of planet in physics. But in anatomy, the orbit is the cavity or socket of the skull in which the eye and its appendages are situated. Or we can refer to the bony sockets, in other words, the bony orbit, or it can also be used to imply its contents. In adult human, the volume of the orbit is 30 milliliters, of which the eye only occupies the 6.5 milliliters, one fifth of the total volume. The orbit is a pyramidal shaped space which is a four wall space and apex. Let's think about our Kdeba situated like this having had situated like this there are two orbits in this Kdebaic head probably like this this is a pyramidal shape shaped orbit And here is the base. And this point is the apex. This is a medial wall and lateral wall. Inside the orbit there are eyeballs to your side there will be a roof of orbit far from your side there is a floor roof is a superior wall and the floor is an inferior wall. The orbital contents comprises the eye, the orbital and retribular fascia, extraocular muscles, cranial nerve 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, blood vessels, fat, lacrimal gland with its sac, and nasolacrimal duct, the eyelids, medial and lateral palpebral ligaments, check ligaments, the suspensory ligament, septum, ciliary ganglion, and short ciliary nerves. There are two important foramina and two important fissures and one canal surrounding the globe and the orbit. Let's look at this figure. There is a supraorbital foramen here and the infraorbital foramen the infraorbital foramen cannot be seen in this figure, but it should be located in this maxillary area below the infraorbital margin of the orbit, infraorbital margin of the orbit, and one centimeters, about one centimeters below. And the superior orbital fissure, superior orbital fissure here, and the inferior orbital fissure is here and there is an optic canal here the supraorbital foramen supraorbital foramen contains the supraorbital nerve which is the first division of trigeminal nerve that means the ophthalmic nerve and lies just lateral to the frontal sinus there may be frontal sinus inside of frontal bone here like this one the infraorbital foramen contains the second division of trigeminal nerve, maxillary nerve. The infraorbital nerve is the branch of the maxillary nerve and sits on the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus. In, uh, inside of this maxilla, there may be maxillary sinus around here like this. Both foramina are crucial as potential pathway for cancer and infections of the orbit to spread into brain or other deep fascia structures.
The optic canal contains the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. Here and ophthalmic artery and sits at the junction of the sphenoid sinus with the esmoidal air cells superior medial and posterior to the posterior to the structures at the orbital apex this is the orbital apex as i explained earlier and uh to your side uh, there is an ethmoid bone and the ethmoidal air cells around here and far from your side there may be a spinoidal sinus behind. It provides a pathway between the orbital contents and the middle cranial fossa. The superior orbital fissure here contains very important structures lie just lateral and inferior to the optic canal lateral lateral and inferior to the optic canal is formed at the junction of the lesser wing and greater wing of the spanoid bone in this figure the uh, yellow green color means the spanoid bone and the uh, this triangle means the lesser wing And this structure is the greater wing. It is a major pathway for intracranial communication containing the cranial nerve 3, 3, ocular motor nerve, 4, trochlear nerve, and 6, abducens nerve, which control the eye movement via the extraocular muscles and the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve. Cranial nerve uh, 5, it means that the uh, trigeminal nerve. And it houses the ophthalmic vein 2. The inferior orbital fissure here lies inferior and lateral to the ocular globe at the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. It is not as much important in function, though it does contain a few branches of the maxillary nerve and the infraorbital artery and vein. Other minor structures in this orbit include the anterior and posterior esmoidal foramen. There can be found here and here, and it will be discussed in detail later. And the zygomatic orbital foramen probably located in this area. The upper part of the face is occupied by the orbit and the bridge of the nose. Each orbital opening is roughly quadrangular in shape. Like this way. The upper supraorbital margin is formed entirely by the frontal bone. Upper margin is a frontal bone. Interrupted with at the junction of the sharp lateral two-thirds and rounded medial third by the supraorbital notch or foramen, which transmits the supraorbital vessels and nerve. As I explained earlier, there will be a, a supraorbital foramen. The infraorbital margin is formed by the zygomatic bone laterally and maxilla medially. Laterally, zygomatic bone in the sky blue color and the yellow the maxilla, maxilla medially, both lateral and infraorbital margin sharp and palpable by your finger. The medial margin of the orbit is formed above by the frontal bone, probably here, probably here, and below by the lacrimal crest of the frontal process of maxilla. Here. The bony orbit are sclectal cavities located on either side of the root of the nose. Root of the nose here that serves as a socket for eye and is associated tissues. 
The wall of each orbit protects the eye from injury, provides points of attachment for six extraocular muscles that allow the accurate positioning of the visual axis and determine the special relationship between the two eyes, which is essential for both binocular vision and con conjugate eye movements. By convention, and as I said earlier, each cavity is considered to approximate to a quadrilateral pyramid with its base at the orbital opening, narrowing to its apex along the posterior medially directed axis. I will draw the pyramidal shape like this. Posterior medially. Each orbit has a roof, floral and medial and lateral wall. The medial wall lies approximately 25 mm apart in adults and are nearly parallel. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a complicating, but this is a 25 mm in adults on average. The angle between the medial and lateral wall is about 45 degree. This angle, 45 degree. The compromise between protection and ensuring a good field of view dictates that each eyeball is located anteriorly within the orbit. The eyeball located anteriorly, this is anterior, this is posterior, anteriorly located. The eyeball thus occupies only one-fifth of the volume of the orbit. The remainder of the cavity is filled with the extraocular muscles, vessels, and nerves that are contained within and supported by orbital fat and connective tissue. In summary, the orbit transmits optic, ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens nerve and branches of the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and the ciliary parasympathetic ganglion and the ophthalmic vessels. It also contains the nasolacrimal apparatus that mediates tear drainage into the nasal cavity. The bony wall of the orbital canal in humans do not derive from a single bone, but a mosaic of seven embryologically distinct structures. Bones in this figure. This is a frontal bone. Brown color. Maxilla and here is also maxilla, yellow color and zygomatic bone This is the lacrimal bone and violet color is asmoid bone. And yellow green color is a uh, sphenoid bone. And very small portion of the blue color means the the final one palatine bone. to the roof of the orbit. Roof of the orbit is another has another name of the superior wall of the orbit. The roof of the orbit is formed principally by the thin orbital plate. All orbital surface of the frontal bone and minorly lesser wing of the spinoid bone. We can mark as the roof of the roof like this one. It is generally concave on its orbital aspect, which separates the orbital contents and the brain in the anterior cranial fossa. There will be an anterior cranial fossa inside of the frontal bone in this figure, and there are supraorbital natural foramen on the medial third of the supraorbital margin. This one. 
where sometimes it's considered outside of the orbit, the foramen transmits the supraorbital nerve and vessels, as I said. Anteromedially, it contains the frontal sinus and displays a small trochlea fovea, sometimes surrounded by a small spine, where the cartilage cartilaginous trochlea for superior oblique muscles is attached. Around here, uh, there will be a there will, uh, there will be a trochleophobia. Anterolaterally, there is a shallow fossa that houses the orbital part of the lacrimal gland. Around here, there will be a lacrimal gland. The roof slopes down significantly toward the apex, joining the lesser wing of the spinal bone, which completes the roof. The optic canal lies between the roots of the lesser wing and is bounded by medially by the body of spanoid. There may be body of spanoid located located behind the asmoid bone, the violet color.